Hi, I'm John and in this little clip uh, I want to show you about uh, the new Python client. Uh, it's a new client, it has been completely uh, rewritten and with the help of uh, J5 exports and uh, a plugin from Gluon for NetBeans uh, I'm able to create one client which will be running on mobile devices, embedded and desktop. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you uh, some uh, difference between a uh, client running on a mobile device, uh, currently an Android, and on a embedded device, which is the Raspberry Pi. And this is uh, the Pi 2 uh, in a uh, printed enclosure, and uh, this display is a display from Adafruit. Uh, this client um, is... is um, between quotes, a smart client, uh, it will detect if it's uh, running on a mobile device or an embedded or desktop device. When it's on a mobile device, uh, it will try to figure out if it's a phone or a tablet. When it's a phone, a display will be uh, like I will be showing on this one. And if it's a tablet, the display will be like this one. Uh, the, so, let's show you the client. Uh, let's start with the menu. A uh, mobile device is a personal device, and meaning it's bound to a user which is known in the server. So you can see over here, this is my device, um, and this is a fixed device. The main difference, uh, this is my name, and there we have the name of the client. Another difference is the capabilities of the devices, devices and if it's logical to have some functionality. So you can see my menu over here on the phone is different than the menu on the... Uh, on the fixed client. When uh, the client is being ran or uh, of being uh, executed on, an, uh, on a tablet, uh, the menu will also change. It's still a personal device, but uh, you will have, for example, uh, like being shown here, uh, the menu item device discovery added. So when you bought a new device, you want to add it to the server, just grab your tablet, um, let the device can do its work, and you can add devices to the servers just from sitting on your uh, on your couch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the clients, and uh, well, you can see here it's the dashboard, and I have to use the mouse because uh, it's a touchscreen device, but without a touchscreen controller. So what I'm going to do is show you how to create a uh, a dashboard very quickly and um, uh, how it works. Well, in another video, it's already showing how it works on the on the server. So uh, over here, like you see, there's no dashboard. So I will create one on the server, and you'll see it uh, updating here real time. I've already set uh, a couple of things up. Uh, it will create a header which uh, says "Hello Mobile," and it will be showing uh, just the time which is known on the server. So while you are creating your uh, dashboard, you can uh, real time see if the dashboard is well, suiting your needs. Also, the dashboards are real-time updating, so when I will be uh, changing device values, for example over here, this is a slider, um, if I change the slider on the, on the server, you will be able to uh, see it changing on the client. And let me open a de the device, one moment. So, there we go so you can see it changing. Uh, this also works with uh, the, the buttons, uh, macros and uh, graphs. Everything is being updated real-time. So let's walk through the menu options. Uh, like I said, different displays, so you have different setups. Uh, for example, if I want to show the devices on a, uh, a large screen, let's call this just a large screen, not a fixed client, and a small screen. Well, here are the locations, like here the locations, smaller screen, less room, so you have to go through it, the, the server, let's show it over here, and here we have a the server um, uh, controls. Here you can see the graph, and if I open the graph over here, you will be seeing it's the exact same graph. Like I said, it's being built with JFX ports, so it's JFX on mobile and on uh, embedded. By the way, the desktop version looks exactly the same like this. It will get one extra icon over here because it's a full screen app. 
So you can switch between uh, dedicated full screen or just normal full screen. So you can still access your other applications. Uh, we did some changes on the mobile. Uh, we extended the default Java uh, uh, FX class uh, of the class which is being used to make it possible to run on, on mobile. So we have access to hardware buttons and we can go through the devices using the hardware buttons and uh, the menu. As you can see the performance is quite okay. This is a budget phone, well, about 60 euros. So when it runs uh, okay over here it will run smoothly on almost every phone. Because it really is... I wish I hadn't bought it. So uh, let's go to another one, uh, media. So you can see which media is playing. Uh, also for the mobile we have media. Here are your devices or your media players. Currently it is playing the day after tomorrow. So if I would update this to another movie, let's say 2012, uh, you will see that uh, when the media starts playing, it will uh, change the uh, here the, uh, the 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 images of the movie that is playing. Uh, let's go further. Now, flow map. I will change. Wait for at last device discovery. Um, this is quite a cool thingy. Uh, this uh, device discovery is not enabled on uh, mobile because it will just take too much uh, space on display. So, um, uh, like I said, I wish I hadn't bought it. Um, to uh, to enable device discovery, just click on uh, discovery enabled driver. And I can enable here for uh, a single device, a minute, 5, 10, 30 minutes or indefinitely. So I'm going to do a single device, let's say this is a tablet because it will have the exact same interface. Here I have a uh, remote and when I press a, non, of a, press a button of a device not yet known, it will pop up over here, the discovery is turned off. You can click your device, add details uh, of this device, if it's not being able to uniquely identify it, you can select the device from the list, uh, you can give it a name which will give you an uh, on-screen uh, keyboard, as all input fields will, uh, location and category, etc, etc. When you click add, the device is added and it will appear in your device list. But for now it's a demo, so it's gone. Then we have weather. Um, this is the weather display, it shows the current weather and uh, upcoming weather forecast and a 3 day forecast. It depends on the plugin if it's supported or not, so it will be shown or not. Uh, if the plugin doesn't support it, uh, instead of having six fields, you will have three longer fields. Uh, what I've done here for demo purposes, um, although it says it's 18.63 degrees, uh, I made it 37 degrees in the code in the back end. So it shows you what it does when you get a warm day, it will turn red, and if it's colder, it will turn more bluish. So you will immediately see if you're getting warmer hours, colder hours, or warmer or colder days. Well, the weather is also available on, um, on mobile. I have to do some work with it because it's not completely nicely aligned, but it's alpha. Then we have uh, utilities. Yeah, well, utilities is not enabled. Um, it will be like uh, simple applications uh, inside a bigger application. Uh, this utility a timer, for example, you have your display in the in the kitchen, you can set multiple timers for your oven or other stuff and let it interact with the server using custom events. So when uh, well, the time reaches zero or another time, uh, you can have lights being blinked or other things. And now, the floor map. Um, the floor map has been pulled from the original client and uh, as you can see, and if you know the original client, uh, you will recognize it. Um, we have two floors, ground level and basement. It will show the devices. And if, a, if you click a device or touch, uh, click a uh, floor level or touch it, you will be able to pull it out from the list, rotate it, uh, move it around, and zoom it. Just exactly like the original one, you can, uh, you can also pull it uh, together again and uh, select your uh, floor from the list. It has some nice animations, um, 
maybe it's too much but it works uh, you can show your uh, room regions uh, you can show the region names uh, you can hide your devices you have a temperature map well it's about 23 degrees uh, in this room and you can also see the light level so let's turn it off and you have a flat version of it so we'll go to the basement it's uh, it's a bit colder over there as you can see so uh, this is uh, the client at its current state um, well, let's just uh, show you some other stuff like you see on the bottom, um, there's a settings button. It's not yet enabled because there are no settings. You will be able to set different teams. Uh, you have some display settings. And in the future, there will be multiple dashboards with, which can identify a user using a, a camera or uh, on a, any other way. Or just have multiple dashboards for multiple purposes. It supports macros. So here you have macros. If I would press macro here, you will get a full list. Like I said, it's a um, it's a different different display, so you will not get a pop up. It will be shown just like a list. And the same is for uh, scenes. Well, there are no scenes uh, configured yet. And for the presences, presences to see who is at home or who not, who's not. Here you get a full screen, and here a pop up. So this is the client and the current state. Uh, it's still in alpha, uh, alpha version. Um, we work hard on it. Uh, we're proud of it. Uh, we really like it. And um, we hope you enjoy it also. If you've got any comments, please let us know. Um, we like to uh, have your input or make things better. Have some ideas. Uh, like the current dashboard is also based on uh, community input. So, um, yes, please let us know. And like I said, it's built on uh, J5FX and uh, ported to uh, mobile with the help of J5FX ports. Uh, I will put some links uh, below in, uh, in the comment uh, so you can uh, check out these links on uh, building uh, your own applications for embedded or uh, on mobile. What we are also doing is um, we are publishing the Python client libraries and uh, with these libraries uh, is Java uh, it runs on uh, Android and um, embedded and, and on desktop uh, we've not tried uh, RoboVM yet um, we will do that in the future so we can take a look and also supporting iOS you can uh, grab this uh, this uh, this library and uh, try to um, create your own client to be able to interact with uh, with Python. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little um, uh, this little demonstration of the client uh, as it currently is and uh, we hope to have a video soon again with uh, with this client in real use. One thing I would like to add is that uh, this client will detect uh, resolutions. Uh, we've already seen uh, YouTube videos uh, using the exact same client on a Pi TFT uh, display from Adafruit which is touchscreen enabled and uh, it looks like it's working um, I think it's a three and a half inch uh, screen so you will have a couple of buttons like six buttons on the screen so you can uh, put it on an, uh, in a small room to turn on or off lights or uh, some other stuff where not a lot of um, stuff is happening also, we got a, um, a request uh, from a specific uh, user and um, it's quite a good idea. Um, as now it is possible for uh, everyone to go through the menu. And uh, this user wanted to uh, make it possible to only uh, have the dashboard being shown. So when I sh uh, shut down the client, you can uh, restart the client from your terminal and if you add dash dash pure dashboard is true it's now starting um, you will uh, see an, uh, the exact same dashboard but with the menus disabled so if you would uh, put a screen in your living room or something else a user will not be able to open any menus or do other things it will only show you the display 
the power off button will also be gone uh, in the future but currently it's uh, being used because it signs off nicely so I hope you enjoyed uh, this little video and like I said uh, we will put uh, hopefully some new videos uh, online soon and um, for now bye bye and uh, see you soon and let us uh, hear your input